good morning here on this beautiful Lord's Day, uh, getting ready to head out to worship uh, to, today at, uh, at church with uh, the gathering of the body, the local body of believers. And uh, before I do that, I wanted to um, make this uh, video here dealing with what is God's purpose in election. And uh, so I wanted to kind of look at some scriptures to discuss what it is that we see as God's purpose for election. What is his motivation in election? Now, one of the things when we talk about election that we need to understand uh, when we talk about God's electing of people, this is this is God's choosing or God predestining, predestinating uh, or God foreordaining those to come to saving faith and that's what we see throughout scripture i know some people uh, love to argue against god's election of his people but um, that is what we see in scripture and so in this video here today real quickly i want to try to i say it real quickly but I'm going to try uh, because I got to leave here shortly. But I want to talk about his motivation. Uh, what, what is his motivation in election? You see, ultimately, God's motivation in election is for his own good pleasure. Ephesians 1 5 says, having predestined, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to his good pleasure of his will. To the good pleasure of His will, so it's it's for His own good pleasure. First uh, Timothy or Second Timothy one nine says this. <clears throat> Another passage that I think is is hard for people to argue against, um, but it says, "Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to works, it's not based upon works, but according to His own purpose and grace." And then here it says which was given us, so it's given to us in Christ, Jesus, before the world began. It, it can't get more clear than that. Um, and this is done again in this, the motivation for election for his own good pleasure. It also, uh, his motivation in election is to display his glory all right, he wants to display the glory of God in his election. Isaiah 43, 6 through 7 says, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Again, to display his glory is part of his motivation in election. Romans 9, 22 through 24 says, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared, prepared unto glory, even us, whom he hath called. So this is not just to the Jews, because it says not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Okay. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 31 says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which were are made and based th and base things of the world and things which are despised Hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto wisdom 
and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord <clears throat> he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord It also says in uh, Proverbs 16, 4, uh, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. What, what else is God's motivation in his election? Well, it's his special love. His motivation is to display his love. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 8 says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth, the Lord did not send, did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any other people. So it's not him looking down the corridor of time and saying, this is going to be a great people, they're going to be great in number, they're going to be strong, so I'm going to choose them. No, he didn't do that. It says it's not because they were set in number. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Second Thessalonians uh, 2.13 says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you, to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Now, beautiful, beautiful. God's love for his people. His foreknowledge is displayed in his motivation for election. Now, Romans eight twenty nine. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. First uh, Peter 1, 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. <clears throat> so it means this, this special love that we see uh, in Christ on his people. Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Amos 3, 2 says, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Matthew seven twenty two through 23 says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So his foreknowledge is not based upon what he knows you're going to do because he already knows you're going to do it. Uh, he's ordained it. He's predestined it to take place. He's decreed all things. It's not him looking down the corridors of time and seeing these things. It's, it's God knowing these things because he's God. God is immutable. He's unchanging. God is all wise. God is all knowledge, his perfect knowledge. So, so God is not learning things. He's not growing in his understanding of of what's going to happen he's not reactionary he's he's impassable he, he's not reactionary he's not responding to things based upon how he feels he's not responding to things based upon things that you do he knows because god has all foreknowledge uh first corinthians 8 3 says but if a man love god the same is known of him so see he knows him so this foreknowledge he knows you he 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 knows you in a in a intimate way um, in a in a relational way um, <clears throat> and now God has relation with all people you know some people say it's, it's not about religion it's about a relationship um, well even the unbelievers have a relationship with God it is one of enmity um, so they still are at in, in a relationship with God that's just not a um, one of fellowship so it's not that God is looking down and foreseeing things. Uh, Deuteronomy 7.7 7 says, The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in numbers, as I, as I brought out already. Um, 
Romans 9, 11 through 13 says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Romans 9, 16 says, Then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Romans ten twenty says, But Esaias is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. It's not because, again, God is looking down the corridors of time. Uh, it is because God is all knowledge. God is all wisdom. Uh, he is for knowing, which means he knows you in a more personal way, intimate way. As I said, Matthew 7, many will come to him on that day and say, Lord, Lord, look at all these things I've done in your name. He says, depart from me. I never knew you. It's not that God doesn't know them. It's not that God did not create them and, and, and know what they're doing in their life and, and who they are. Uh, the Bible says that God knows our hearts. He knows who we are. He knows our thoughts. He knows our actions and the things we even try to do and hide in the dark. God knows those things. It's not that God doesn't know those people. It's that God doesn't have that relationship with them, that fellowship with them of being his own. Um, and so when it says he does not know them, um, that is not a great place to be in um, because those who uh, are foreknown by God are predestined and called and justified and then glorified. So I hope you have a great Lord's Day today and hope you uh, maybe look at those scriptures and understand and see in God's motivation in, uh, in the uh, purpose for election and why he does election. So God bless. Have a great Lord's Day.